In this second video on differential equations, we're going to look at growth and decay problems. Formulating and solving them and understanding written questions involving rates of change and proportional change and how to write out the differential equations, the appropriate differential equations for the problem. I'm going to start off by going through a question a bit at a time and then you can have a go at one. So this first question, the population of a town was 60,000 in 1990, had increased to 63,000 by 2000. Assuming that the population is increasing at a rate proportional to its size at any time, estimate the population in 2010, giving your answer to the nearest hundred. The second question is a exponential decay question that you can have a try at. Okay, well here is what it says here. It says the population is increasing at a rate proportional to its size. So the change in population with respect to time, so dn dt is equal to kn. And when something's increasing proportional to something else, this is how we write it. We write the constant here, that's the rate that it's increasing by proportional to the population itself. So that's how we would do that. Here, where we've got a decay problem, it's decreasing proportionally. So decreasing into proportion to x. Okay. So to solve, well, the first thing we do is write this in that exponential form that we found from our differential equations. So if we've got dn dt equals kn, then that means that we can write n as a e to the kt. At time 0, 1990, the value of n is 60,000. So if we put a 0 in here, we get e to the 0, which is 1. So in other words, n is equal to a, so a equals 60,000. And this is typical of how these questions start. These questions usually start where you have to put t0 in to find this value here for a. They're quite often written in the question in this form, but it's not unusual for you to have to write out this proportional relationship and put it in this form. We know that 10 years later, in other words, t equals 10, that n is 63,000. So we can now put all that information in here and that will enable us to work out k. We know what n is, 63,000, we know that a is 60,000, e, and we know t is 10. So the only unknown will be k. If we now solve that by logging, if we get 60,000 over there, divide by 60,000, that just leaves an e term here, so we can then ln both sides, natural log both sides, and that then enables us to solve for k. And we get k as 0 0.00488. Log this in your calculator and then divide by 10. OK, so, so far then, we found a, we found k. Estimate the population in 2010, giving your answer to the nearest 100. Well, again, using the same formula, we know that for 2010, T 
t will be 20. We now know what k is. We know that a is 60,000. So we can then find out n. So if we plug everything into the right hand side, we can do the last bit. So 60,000 e to the 0.00488 t, and we know t is 20. If we work this out, we can do all that on the calculator, we get that, and it was to the nearest 100. OK, so that's one done. Now your turn. Pause the presentation and answer the question. If need be, go back to the equation that it gave you for the rate of change when the question was up earlier. OK. So that's the equation in terms of our differential equations. This is what we end up with. We separate variables, etc. Again, use t0. Because e to the 0 is 1, we get a equal to x. We know also that after 4 hours, there's only 0.1 milligrams per litre, so x is 0.1 when t is 4, so that will enable us to find k. Again, get the 0.5 over there, isolate the e term, we can then natural log both sides, solve for k, and we now have a k value. Find out how long it takes for there to be only 0.05 milligrams. So we need to find out what the time will be when x is 0.05. So the only unknown now will be the t. So put everything else into the equation. The only unknown is t. If we put our x as 0.05. We get 5.728, and that's how long it will take to the nearest minute. Be careful with that, because remember the 60 minutes in an hour. It's very easy to treat that as 5.44. It's not, it's 5.728. OK, so a lot of exam questions are like that. So that sums up what we've done so far. We have to get used to this idea of proportional to and what it actually means. We need to write out, it's handy if you can just write this, but if you need to separate variables and solve the differential equation, then by all means you can do that. Obviously it's a bit more time consuming. And then they follow that general pattern of t0. Then you put in a given value to find k. And then usually the last part of the question either wants you to find, in this instance it would be x, wouldn't it? Or sometimes t where they for a given x. OK, so we'll go through this type of problem. This is typical. Temperature of a cup of coffee is given in degrees Celsius at time t minutes after it was poured. The temperature of the room in which the cup is placed is 20 degrees C. So we model this like this. It's decreasing, decreasing proportionally, but because the room temperature is 20, we get this x minus 20. So you can see here in words, it's proportional to the amount that the temperature is above room temperature. And it's an example of Newton's law of cooling. We 
you can solve the equation as follows using our solving differential equations technique and we get this here and then we solve problems in a similar way to previously obviously we have to incorporate this plus 20 which made things a little bit more to do okay here's an exam question exactly that type this is what you need to be able to do really 10 marks so have a go at it see how you get on and the mark schemes on the next slide so pause the presentation have a go okay I'll put the mark scheme up there it is so check how you've got on if you either got it right or you feel you fully understand it now having seen the mark scheme then you should be prepared for the lesson otherwise go back over it or if necessary check this out on my maths or in the textbook or pop along to support or come and ask me so I can go through it with you